everyone, Federico here, and today we're going to see how to create a camera orbiting around an object in the scene. So we're going to see how to make this orbiting movement and how to make it interesting. So if you are curious on how to do that, keep watching and let's get right into it. Okay, so let's start. And the first thing first, I'm going to get my JIT world with the camera. So this is just a snippet that I always use. You can see it in a lot of my tutorials. So we got a JIT world with uh, full scale anti aliasing size, floating one race color for the background, uh, sync zero, 60 frames per second enabled by default. Then we got the camera. Um, we're going to delete the anim drive because we are not going to use the keyboard to move the camera around. So the camera's position uh, 200z axis looks at the center of the world, is on tripod, and that's lock look. So we'll always look at this point in space. Uh, then I want to have a nice sky box, so I have here a little snippet, which is just a GGL environment with the Photo Studio Loft All 2K XR, which is a file that ships with Max, and then there is a sky box here. So we got our environment map. Maybe we can even change it and use another one. So we'll just go and drop one from my collection. Uh, on my website, you can find a lot of links where you can download uh, sky boxes um, uh, for free. Okay, so let's create an object so we can kind of uh, get a sense of the movement of the camera. So let's actually get a GGL model. We will normalize it. And you can also just create a GGL grid shape. Actually, it doesn't really matter. And there we go. Here is my object, which is pretty big uh, in the scene and is also on the wrong axis rotated. So let me create a GGL PBR so we can get sense of how this object looks like. Okay, it's a dragon. And let me actually rotate it. I will not hard code this attribute because this file takes a long time to load. So I will just rotate it uh, with the attribute. And what I want to do is to rotate it minus 90 degrees on the X axis. There we go. Cool. Um, so now we can start move our camera around. So for that, we have a lot of possibilities. I will just show you a very simple one. So we can pack here position. We can just say pre pan position for the camera. And then we can do like that. We can use JIT time to get a continuous stream of numbers. Maybe we can decrease the speed already to something like 0 0.8. And then we can use that uh, uh, value to create like a position on the X axis and a position on the Z axis. So if I create here a pack object, we can set this as the X position. And then we could get the sign to set the Z position. And then we could use those numbers to move the camera. So now the camera is rotating around this object and is always looking at it. But let's say that we actually want to get farther from the object. Okay, to do that, we just have to make the radius of this uh, imaginary circle around the object bigger. So we can use a VEX object here and multiply that by whatever comes in the second inlet. And we also want to say scalar mode one because we are going to. Oh, I always confuse the number with the type. So it's actually F1 and here is F2. And then we can just use here um, scalar number to set how far the camera should be from the object. We can also load the message with a three or something. And we can also choose the speed at which the camera moves using the speed attribute. So we can do something like that. We can make it go slower or faster. Okay, but this is not super interesting. We could make this at least a bit more interesting. So what we can do first, we can add also a vertical movement. So we can create another sign and use that for the vertical movement. And now we got something a bit more interesting going on. Now the vertical movement is a bit too much. So what I will do so multiply this value by like 0.15 or something. So it now goes between minus 0.15 and 15. And then I'm going to sum this to 0.15. So now it goes between 0 and 0.3, which uh, will let us look at the object and never go like below the object, but just slightly above it. Okay, so let's make it now still a bit more interesting. So let's add some kind of randomization to this movement. So we can do that in a lot of ways. What I will do um, is to use the JIT time again, but this time I want to give it uh, the mode 
So our time output is calculated uh, using a function and then I want to choose as a function, I want to get the pearly noise. So this will give us a pearly noise going between minus one and one, which it's like random numbers, but not completely random. They kind of never go too far from the previous number. For example, if we visualize those using a multi-slider, to which we give a slider style, point scroll, then we can see that this is... Uh, let's make the speed a bit smaller so we can see this better. 0.1 okay so you can see that the values are like never too far from the previous one they created this sort of smooth transition between each other so that's exactly what we want to have and we can now do something like um, sum those values to the output of g times so okay there will be a bit more movement as you can see it is pretty crazy. Uh, let's make it actually go slower. This will surely help. Exactly, because the slower it goes, like the smoother the, the noise is going to be. So let's actually hard code this attribute here. So 0 0.01. Okay, so now we can see that sometimes it slows down, sometimes it goes faster, but it does the same on all the three axes. X, Y, and Z does the same slowing and the same uh, going faster. So that's actually maybe a bit boring. So what we can do is to actually create three times this noise. So we just duplicate it. Let's actually delete those flow nums. And what I want to do, oops, how many did I actually create? Well, and also we want to add a phase attribute for at least two of them so that when they start, they don't have the same phase and the, otherwise they will produce the same numbers. So one we give a phase at 0 0.5, to another we give a phase of 0 0.75, for example. Cool. So now what we can do is to just sum the three different noises to the three different uh, sine and cosine input. I don't know, I, I get like a weird bug where the cable actually doesn't show up. Super strange. Anyway, um, cool. So now we got this going. So if you want to have more changing on the Z axis, for example, we can make the Z speed, uh, the speed of the G time that is responsible for the Z, Z position faster. Oh, this is actually the Y position. Okay, so that's actually the Z position. Let's keep the Y as it was. Uh, let's actually make also the, y, the X position go faster. Cool. Um, now there is only one problem with what I've just done, which is that uh, now uh, using the, the pearly noise, you can see that uh, the camera will sometimes be closer to the object and sometimes be faster. Let's, by the way, make the speed a bit faster on the main G time thing. So let's hard code it to 0 0.6. So yeah, the problem is that the camera will sometimes be farther from the object and sometimes will be closer, which could be annoying if we just want the camera to always be at the same distance from the object. So in order to fix that, the first solution that kind of came to my mind is to normalize this vector, the position vector. And so it will always have a length of one, so always a distance of one from the center. And then we can multiply it by our desired value to decide the new radius. So I have here a little snippet for normalizing a list of numbers in max. Let me show it to you. What it does is simply first it gets the square of the single component of these three uh, values list, gets the square of them, sum them together, then takes the square root of this value and then divides every component of the list by the, um, by the length of the vector. This is how we normalize a vector. So you can pause the video now, copy this little snippet and add it to your snippet uh, library. I will just plug it inside here. Okay. Great, as you can see now, the distance from the object is going always to be the same. Uh, it's never going to get like closer to the object, which is exactly what I was hoping to get. Let's make this maybe a bit faster. Uh, let's add a bit of uh, light to the scene. So I just create a JIT GL light of type point. And I will make it like a sort of red, orangish. Oh, I forgot to write the name of the attribute, which is diffuse. And you can see that now the, the object has some like golden accents. Let's actually try to put it closer to the object. Now we can change the position of the light so to get a better result. 
I'm gonna satisfied. It should be good to go. Maybe if we want to get it a bit more interesting, we could also scale the values of the single JIT uh, per, uh, paddling noise here. So this will add a bit more variety to the movement. Exactly. So you have to play a bit around with these and see when you are satisfied. If you just want an orbiting camera around the object, you just need cosine and sine. You don't even need to normalize the vector. But if you want a bit more variety, you can add the pearly noise or some other, some other type of noise. Cool. So this was it. Hope you found this interesting and uh, you can download the patch from my pattern, which will not contain the, the model because uh, um, I don't have the copyright for this model. You can download it from the, one of these links on my website. And uh, I wish you a happy patching. Have fun. See you soon. Ciao.